many youth groups that are served here in this um, part of the country. And every month they all come together and they meet up and do a little event. And so we decided that since we're going to feature this amazing youth group that does so much for this community here in this district, that we're going to make this our season finale for this part of Beyond Basic. And then we're going to feature more districts, hopefully in the near future. So for this episode, I'm just going to introduce our guests. We have six people accompanying me here today. So we have a big group <laughs> this week. But yes, they're going to tell us their name, which part of Corazal they're from, their age, and then a fun fact about themselves. So we're going to start with Father. Us his intro. Okay. Buenos días a todos. Bendiciones. Soy el Fray Romualdo Robles Pérez, vicario de la parroquia de San Francisco Javier aquí en Corozal. Hello, good morning. My name is Chelsea Hines. I am 21. I am from the village, beautiful village of Shaibe, also known as Dubai. Um, a fun fact about me would be, let me see. Um, okay, since I was a kid, when I was growing up, I said I wanted to be a teacher. But then I started a lot of work the teacher gets, so I said, nah, better I get another profession. Then I went to high school and I wanted to be a doctor. So then I said, I'll study science. I went for it and guess what happened? CXC came and I failed my CXC. So I said, oh, well, that's Nimodos, I have to get another program career, so I chose accounting. But in my mind, I said I still want to be, to help the community, to help people in a certain way in a medical field. So um, I am thankful to God because you know how he works different ways? So guess what? I'm now working at a place where I work with people, I care for people with diabetics. And I also get to put my accounting skills, so wow. it turned out good. Awesome. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Corazal. Good morning, Belize. Well, I want to introduce myself. I am Wengley Henderson Pop. I am 25 years old. And the first thing Miss Tessa saw when I, when I greeted her was like, how old are you? <laughs> She thought I was 18, but no, I'm 25 years old, and um, currently I'm the president of the youth group here at Corzal. And it's been a pleasure to serve my community, to serve my church, and to serve, um, well, all the persons here. And, um, well, a fun fact about me is that even though I'm, I'm part of the church, I'm also, um, I'm, I also form part of a mariachi band. Whoa. And I play the guitar <laughs> there and I sing as well. And um, well, another fun fact would be that um, I can swim, but not like in front like this. Uh. I can swim backwards and I always, whenever I swim, I um, take a nap and I sleep <laughs> on top of the water. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, you're full of surprises. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good morning everyone, my name is Islali Castaneda. I am 21 years old, I come from the village of Pachacan. Many people say that I don't look my age because, well, I look more smaller. Um, a fun fact about me is that I was studying um, business in high school, but after the pandemic and COVID came, um, I rest for a couple of years and when I came back, I decided to change career and went to the information technology course. Good morning, everyone. My name is Suzette Yam. I'm 17 years old and I'm from the beautiful village of Pachacan. Um, a fun fact of me is that I like playing with my puppies. They're so adorable and I enjoy playing a lot with them. Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Javier Campos. I am from the village of San Narciso. The fun fact about me is that I like playing musical instruments in church. I play the keyboard, guitar, and I always attend the youth gatherings and play my music. Yes, this morning when I came, I got to the bus. 
Yes. <laughs> and um, Javier was playing playing the instruments and was in the choir and I thought that was very impressive to yes. have an all youth choir yes. for these events that you guys have. Which I would love to hear more about later in the show. But right now, we're going to go into our icebreaker activity. Which I'm going to tell you guys right now, the topic for this episode is the sacrament of confession. So I thought that the game we play should be something called true confessions. So what we've done is we've all written down on two separate pieces of paper, two different stories. One of them is true and one of them is not true. And we're going to pick whichever one arbitrarily. Each of us are going to pick one of the stories and we're going to read them for everyone else. Then all of the other guests are going to have the opportunity to ask questions about the story. Stuff like, when did this happen? How did this happen? How old were you? Basic questions like that to see if we believe the story or if we think that it's false. Once our time is up with asking questions, then we're going to decide if, the, if we think that the question, if the story is true or false, and then the person is gonna tell us if we are right or wrong. So maybe we're gonna start on that side with Javier okay. with his two stories. So just pick one, whichever one. I guess this one. Uh, so. One day I was riding my bicycle in my yard, then I jumped on the grass and a bone entered my feet. I almost died when I took off the bone and saw the blood and the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was this? Uh, four years. <laughs> what was the feeling you got? Mm, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone can say true or false whichever one okay i believe it's true it sounded real <laughs> i believe it's false <laughs> well about the one yeah <laughs> i'll say true 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 <laughs> 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 okay. Currently, the president of Nuestro Señor de Esquipulas Youth Group. How big is the youth group? It consists of 15 members. No? No. no. False. False. One day while traveling to Kikakar, one day, I saw several dolphins that we wanted to touch them. Mm. Which water taxi? <laughs> <laughs> True, they believe the one we are going to Kikakar. What part of the boat were you sitting in? On the left side. What colors did the dolphins have? Gray. How big was it? Where is the baby or the mama? It was a big one. Okay. Falsa. Let's say it's true. <laughs> I'm like half half. Um, false. I'll say true. It was false because. We didn't actually see them, but we heard that they were saying that they were, but when we turned back to see them, we didn't see them. <laughs> okay, let's see. When I went to World Youth Day, I shook the Pope's hand. When was that? 2019. What was your reaction to it? I cried. <laughs> so how old were you at that time? Fifteen. Was that your or was that your desire to do that? Yeah, I wanted to meet the Pope, yes. In what um, place was that you um, Panama? Okay. 
Cierto. I was swimming at a river and I decided to cross on the other side and I passed with no problem. However, whenever I was trying to return back on the other side where I, where I was previously, the current had already got stronger. Beneath the water there was a huge log and I held myself on it. My father and my brothers had to come and rescue me for me not to drown. How old are you? 14. Where? Which river? I don't know the name of the river, but it was a river. <laughs> okay. False. I would say false. <laughs> true. 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 It was true. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. It was right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I wrote about a uh, time. Um, I was invited to a retreat of youth and I made my decision not to come so I put all the obstacles that I say no I won't go and the next thing I know I'm already dressed and I came and it was very beautiful and it's at the same exact place where I am right now and I saw two dogs and at the time I saw the Eucharist was exposed, so it was very magical. I was, I saw the Eucharist, and and at the background I saw those dolphins and the water right here, right here, right here. Tone is in. Yes, tone is in. <laughs> you heard it right. I don't have much questions. When did that happen? Um, like four years ago? Falso. <laughs> False? False. False. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> it was right there. I saw those dolphins. It was very magical. Oh, A yeah. wonderful experience. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. We just got schooled. Okay. Okay. Un día estaba en Sarteneja y me invitaron a ir a ver las fosas donde se pesca. Pero lo interesante que cuando entraron, entraron muchas tortugas, grandes tortugas, y una me atacó a mí. Pero otra tortuga vino en ayuda mío, en mi ayuda y tiró la otra tortuga como diciendo que no me mordiera. Y fue una experiencia inolvidable que nunca he olvidado. ¿Cierto o falso? Cierto. <risa> okay. Falso. Cierto. 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 <risa> Cierto. That's a really cool story. Uh, ok, bueno, well, thank you everybody for participating in, in this activity. We are going to take a break. hardware your trusted source for quality. Looking for unbeatable deals on hardware and home essentials? Head over to Castillo's Hardware today. We've got competitive prices on PVC pipes SCH 40 sizes from a half to eight inches, SCH 26 sizes from one and one fourth to four inches, up to 20% off on select sizes. And that's not all. Don't miss out on our flash sale featuring the Whirlpool top freezer refrigerator with optional ice maker, 
freezer temperature controls, dairy bin, and incandescent lighting, all for just $1,295. We also have a special promotion on the Whirlpool washing machine. Get it now for just $1,195. Enjoy multiple wash temperatures, a heavy-duty cycle, and progress monitoring features. Plus, we're offering 50% off Valspar Integrity paints. Choose from a wide range of no-compromise colors for your home, available in gallons and buckets. Visit Castillo's Hardware today for these amazing deals and more. We are located at Pescador Drive, San Pedro Town, Belize. Contact us at 226-2302 or 614-6632. Email cast.hardware at btl.net. These offers are valid while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. Castillo's Hardware, your trusted source for quality. If you know that you like exercise at night It no matter if you run or you ride a bike If you're jogging on the highway or jogging on the street Wear bright clothes so drivers can see Reflective clothing will do too Put lights on your bike, don't play with your life You could get back things but life is not one You could get back things but life is not one We don't want nobody get knocked down So wear bright clothes when sun go down We don't want nobody get knocked down So wear bright clothes when sun go down so if you're jogging at night, wear bright clothes. If you're riding at night, wear bright clothes. So if you're jogging at night, wear bright clothes. If you're riding at night, wear bright clothes. Yeah. Everybody, we just had our first segment where we all introduced ourselves and we talked about our true and false stories about our life. And now we're going to go into the segment of confession. We're just going to have a discussion with everybody, all the youths, and with Father. Just a reminder, we're here at Tony's Inn in Corazal for the final episode of this part of Beyond Basic District Edition. So. We're just gonna, you know, have a regular discussion. I think we can all start off with saying, when we think of the sacrament of confession, what do we think of? Do we get like nervous? Do we get like, does it make us feel freeing? Like how, what's our initial reaction to when someone says, hey, wanna go to confession? <laughs> okay, um, I would say when, I, when somebody asks me that, I would of course freak out. I would be like, I have to say my sins right now. <laughs> like, I feel I have to be ready. I get into anxiety. But then after I go for it, you feel that peace. I would say it's freeing. It's like when you have, um, you have your heavy heart, and then when you go to confess, you just feel this peace, that lightness. It's like you just gave it to Father. Like your sins, you, you gave that weight to Father, and you feel like more free, um, calm, at peace, and then you feel like you're more open to things, like you're more closer to God, I would say. Well, I agree with her because what, whenever you go to confess, I believe like it's somewhat um, intimidating at first, or maybe you like you would feel like ashamed of your sins or. You are conscious of what you have done and going to a next person to to reveal your sins it's like a bit scary i would say i don't know if that's the right word to say but whenever you go there you confess your sins you give it all you free yourself and you're you're self you're aware of yourself and of all your actions that you have done and whenever you release that i believe um well you feel free then Okay, so when, when I hear the word confession, I, I feel afraid because I, I don't know what really to say to the three priests, okay, like saying my, all, all these things, but I think it's good because the, the priest will give you some tips on how to pursue that. Father, um, did you 
guys can kind of translate, yeah. please. Why do we need to confess our sins to a priest? Why can't we do it just to God? Este sacramento son de los dos sacramentos que se llaman de sanación. Tanto la unción como la confesión son de sanación. Son liberadores. ¿Por qué se tiene que confesar uno con un sacerdote? Vemos que cuando Jesucristo manda a los discípulos a predicar, dice esta palabra, y los pecados que ustedes perdonen les serán perdonados, y los que no se los perdonen les quedarán sin perdonar. Ahí está el mandato. Es un mandato que los discípulos tenían que perdonar los pecados porque era todo sacramento, hermanos, todo sacramento tiene como antesala o antes de el sacramento de la confesión. Todos los sacramentos, porque todos los sacramentos son signos de la gracia por medio del cual Dios nos quiere salvar. No podemos hacerlo directamente porque directamente no hay un signo por medio del cual sea objetivo. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que así como el pecado, el pecado siempre va a ser algo concreto, ¿sí?, algo concreto, robar es tomar algo, así también el signo del sacramento de la confesión tiene que ser, tener un signo. ¿Cuál es el signo? Que el sacerdote impone las manos y hace el signo de yo te absuelvo de todos tus pecados. Ahí ya está quitado. Porque lo otro sería, cuando decimos directo, no hay ningún signo directo. ¿Sí? No hay, porque hay algo concreto. Y porque es algo concreto el pecado, por lo tanto, el sacramento tiene que tener este signo que tiene que ser objetivo. Y el mandato ya está dado. El mandato no lo puso la iglesia, sino el mismo Jesucristo, cuando dice a los apóstoles, perdonen los pecados, y pecado que es perdonado será absuelto. Y lo, el que no es perdonado no será absuelto. ¿Qué, ¿Qué sería la mejor manera que uno puede tomar para ir a confesarse? La mejor manera de confesarse, ¿saben cuál es? Primero, la gracia que Dios nos da. ¿Sí? La pregunta que hicieron al principio es muy buena. ¿Cómo te sientes al ir a confesar? Muchos sentimos, ¿saben qué? Pena. O sea, como un poquito de miedo. ¿Qué me va a decir el Padre? Uno mismo dice, tengo un poco de vergüenza, de pena. Y, y esto, ¿saben por qué da? Porque nosotros reconocemos que lo que hemos hecho es una falta. No se olviden a Adán y Eva. Cuando ellos cometieron el pecado de desobediencia, ellos dicen que se sintieron, que Culpables. Y no querían reconocer. Porque el pecado que hace es poseernos. Y no nos quiere soltar, ¿eh? Una persona que está en pecado no es muy fácil darse cuenta de que está en pecado. Necesita una voz interior que Dios lo llama para que vuelva al sacramento y vuelva a la gracia. ¿Qué se necesita? Uno, disponibilidad. Ir. No tengas miedo. No tengas miedo. Ve a la misericordia de Dios. ¿Por qué? Me gusta mucho lo que dicen algunos santos. Que el trono de Dios es su misericordia. ¿Sí? El trono de Dios es su misericordia. Lo primero que vamos a encontrar en Dios es su misericordia. Después su juicio, por supuesto, porque hay juicio. Pero lo primero es que Dios nos quiere salvar. Mi consejo es, no tengan miedo. Vayan. Vayan al sacramento. Busquen al sacerdote y con confianza acérquense a confesar. Sí, aquí vamos a tener dos cosas muy importantes. Todos los pecados veniales, todos, se perdonan en el acto de contrición en cada misa. ¿sí? Pecados veniales, pero los pecados mortales no. ¿sí? Los pecados mortales no. Es necesario confesarse. Por eso la iglesia ha sido muy sabia. Antes de comenzar cada celebración, pedimos perdón a Dios por aquellas faltas que hemos cometido. Pero los pecados mortales sí son necesarios confesarse porque 
quitan la gracia. El pecado venial solo nos deja ver que necesitamos ser humildes de parte delante de Dios y seguir adelante. ¿sí? No, cuando hay pecado mortal, es necesario confesar. Cuando hay pecado venial, es necesario hacer el acto de contrición. Y con eso podemos seguir avanzando en nuestra vida espiritual. Well, that's all the time we have with Father for this episode. And so we're just going to close off this segment and thank Father so much for being able to talk to the youths to answer questions and to just, you know, educate us more on the topic of the sacrament. We will be back after this break and we're going to talk a little bit more about confession. But for right now, um, we're going to say goodbye to Father. And do you have any, any last goodbyes for our audience? Bendiciones a todos. Dios me los cuide y los bendiga. Paz y bien. Thank you so much. We'll see you very soon in a little bit after the break. Cyclists, we know the thrill of the open road, but improper overtaking can result in severe injury or worse. It can shatter your life and dreams. It can shatter the emotions of the people you love. Or, in the best case scenario, you're left with a hefty fine. Driving recklessly is not worth it. Follow the rules of the road and stay alert. Safe overtaking leads to a smooth journey. Choose patience and safety over impatience and recklessness. It can make all the difference. A message from the Second Road Safety Project and the Caribbean Development Bank. Every project has to start somewhere. And Brothers Habet's got you covered. We're the place for professionals because we understand success is built on quality and reliability. For the do-it-yourselfers, seeking quality tools and materials to bring their out-of-the-box ideas to life. Our paint department offers a kaleidoscope of hues to those looking to express their unique style. And for those seeking the perfect touch of elegance for their homes, we offer a curated collection of household fixtures and furnishings that caters to every taste. But what sets Brothers Habet apart is our exceptional customer service. Our employees go above and beyond to ensure that every customer's needs are met. We're here to see you through your building journey. Visit Brothers Habet and get started today or call or WhatsApp us for a quote. See you soon. We're back here in Carrizal at Tony's Inn talking about the sacrament of confession. We just had Father accompany us and tell us more about what he knows as a priest who actually you know, hears confessions every day and knows the importance of, of confession and why we need to go often. Now I'm just going to talk to these wonderful young people about their experience with the sacrament and just hear about their views and talk about it a little bit more. So I know for me that I can also get scared when it comes yeah. to confession and sometimes I have a hard time like dragging myself to to the sacrament. I might make excuses like, oh, I don't, do I really need to go? Or Oh, like, I mean, that that priest, I don't really like going to confession with him, or I'll find some excuse to, to not go or to, to put it off. And that's why I I know for me it's helpful to, like, find an accountability person. I'll, I'll have a friend that I'll say, please, when you're going to confession, take me to confession so that we can both go. Or, or I'll find, like, I'll text the priest and say, Father, when are you free? And when he says a time, I'll be like, okay, I can't run away because Father is expecting me, you know, versus trying to go to the confessional whenever I get there. And so tell me, like, how do you guys overcome your fear when you, when you have a hard time, you don't want to go? How do you guys remedy that? Um, 
Okay, <laughs> theme self, sorry. Um, I would say, like, like you said, you have a hard time. But when I see the priest sitting there, it's like um, I make up my mind. Like I come, I ask God to calm my anxiety, and then I would be like, you know, I can't run from this. It is the day, and I have to get it done. Um, so when I go, well, most. I would prepare somewhat myself and then I'll be, okay, these are the worst things I've made for the week or for the month and I have to get it over with because I feel like if you keep dragging it, like Father said, um, and it was something important he also said um, in the Mass that whenever you keep dragging something, it ends up affecting other people. So it's not um, directly affecting the person but you know, whatever you have, like your sins, you end up somewhat passing it to the, another person and you're affecting them. So whenever you free yourself from that sin, it's like, okay, I'm already clean. You feel pure again. You feel at peace. And then you, you can be around people. You can love them again without holding any, how do you say, um, something against the people, let's say if you had a sin with this person you hate or whatever they did to you, and you cannot talk with them. So it's like you're affecting both of you guys, but the person, you have to tell them you're sorry. You have to ask for forgiveness. It's like going to God. God will, the, the priest will tell you, you should go with this person and ask for forgiveness. And whenever you do that, I will honestly, I feel at peace. I feel that calmness, and I feel pure again. That's how I feel. Well, the way I overcome um, while going to confession is by knowing like the different actions that you have done, just being self-aware of all your sins. And once you want to free that, the will that you have within you, well, you can courageously go to the priest and, well, Tell him all your sins and God will listen to you through them since they are the ones who are the representative of the church. Therefore, we should not be afraid. And um, this is so freeing afterwards whenever you finish confessing. You will feel so free. You will feel like you have a stronger relationship with God and you can go out there and just be yourself and do better than you were before. Well, I believe that's, well, that's how I overcome the fear of going to confess. Well, the way I overcome going to confession is taking that courage and say to myself that I can do it for myself and for others because it helps me to be a better person and as well take care and love others and not hurt them instead. Because if I am clean within me, I will like transmit that positive vibe to them. And that is the, will make, also make me feel that strong bond with God and feel more safe when I talk to him. So me overcoming the confession, First, I, I watch videos in YouTube, how, how to do that, <laughs> to, to, to feel that, prepare yourself, prepare yourself, and then go to the priest, ask God for that courage, Accept, accepting your, your, your sins, and after that you feel like new, new for doing more sins. <laughs> Yeah, I think those are all very, very good tips. Um, I like what you were saying about saying the big sins first. I know that's like a tip that I hear a lot is when you, instead of like saying, oh, you know, I, I, I told a white lie and then I, I, I hit Millie's sister and then, <laughs> and then I killed somebody and then I, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you kind of just like make a Lee sandwich and try like hope, oh my gosh, I hope the priest did not hear that or, or something, you know, just be courageous or we, we kind of told around it. Like I, I did something that, you know, I, I made my mom upset, but then you don't say how you made her yeah. upset or you be very vague and it's kind of like you're, you're not actually confessing and I know for me for a long time 
had a hard like I had a very hard time with going to confession and it was just you know like my pride and, and your what, whatever you know the devil really doesn't want you to go to confession and so there's all these obstacles always that he'll put in your way so that you don't go and I had such a hard time with confession and I remember I would yeah I would go to confession and I would say people always talk about you feeling free afterwards but I never feel free like it doesn't make me feel any better and then I would evaluate it and I'm like yeah but I'm not actually really being vulnerable in the confessional and I'm not actually taking those load of sins and taking that big all the baggage that I'm carrying and actually giving it to Jesus I'm just I'm still holding on to it I'm still holding on to my pride I'm still holding on to my fears and my anxieties of whatever it is that is keeping me from actually being honest and actually giving God everything. And so I just, um, I know that the church only technically requires you to go to confession when you A, committed mortal sin, or B, when you've, like once a year. You will have to only go to confession once a year in order to stay in communion with the church or if you've committed mortal sin. But do you think that Catholics should go to confession more often than the once a year mark and if yes how often and why um, I would say we as Catholics um, we are humans we sin um, and the Catholic only allows us well the standard is to confess once a year or when you have committed mortal sins but I would say um, we should go more often, maybe like three every three months, because let's say um, you committed Im immortal sin, but you don't see it as that. So and you go only once a year. So you've been dragging so many sins, and till so that year you go to confess, and then and get. And what about your other sins? Like you don't you only say the major ones or the ones you don't see important or not even the mortal sins, but I believe as Catholics, we should go every three months. It's like, like I mentioned earlier, it's like setting your soul free, because if you hold on to this so much sins, even though you confess, you still that heavy on you, you know? So I would say, well, to me, I would say every three months. Well, for me, I believe we should go more often. As how Miss Chelsea mentioned, all of us are humans and all of us sin, even the priest, even the, the Pope, each one of us have a sin. Since we were born, we were born in sin. Therefore, and like how I mentioned, I don't think there, there, there is like a set time that we should go and confess, but I believe we should go more often depending on how we feel, depending on the sin we have committed, and depending on how how much we need from God, how much we need to release these sins that we have in us that are dragging us. Therefore, I don't, I don't, I, I can't say there's like a specific time or there's a certain um, period that you should um, confess your sin, but how often you feel you want to free yourself from those sins. Well, I do believe that we should go more often to confession for about two months or every month if you, how you feel, because confession helps you to work spiritually and it, like if you often go and do confession, it keeps on taking away all the heavy load that you might carry and it helps you to like get accustomed not to do bad habits and keep improving yourself more and more every time um, well i believe we should go often to confession because it help us spiritually and maybe it should be like every three months or two months how we feel we are with god like what are our sins or okay so i believe you know, we catholics need to go more often since we commit a lot of sins, maybe there are persons that are afraid of it. But when you feel that courage, you must go. For also, you you, um, you might go for the priest to give you some tips. 
how to, to overcome. Yeah, I like that point because I think a lot of times we think, oh man, I can I can solve it myself. I just I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that, Lord. I'll do I won't do it again. And then you think that you have the strength, but that is purely from the devil. The idea that you can do like you can do anything and you can overcome those things by yourself, because I I mean I know from for me like if I. I, I always appreciate the advice that the priest gives and I always appreciate the support and knowing that A, it's not, it's not the end of the world and that God gives us the mercy and he gives us the grace. And not only is the advice of the priest helpful, but the absolution, you know, when he gives the blessing and he tells you your sins are forgiven, he's giving you grace from God so that you don't commit those sins. And, and it's a offering to God those things and he will your guardian angel and the saints and um, Jesus himself will look at you in those in those sins that you struggle with and he will give you particular graces for those sins that you're struggling with and the only way that he can really give all that he has to offer you through his church is if you go to the confessional and you go to the church and ask for those graces that his the mother church can own, only she can give and so I think that's a very important point that, that you made about, about the sacrament. But yes, um, thank you so much for, for talking to me about the sacrament of confession and for being an inspiration to other young people. You know, it's, it, it is truly inspiring to hear that you all are so involved in your parishes and that you're so close to the faith and that you're, you know, pulling yourselves to live out the faith in this in this way and then also encouraging other people not only in Corazal but now all over the country from being being on Guadalupe Media and, and talking to everybody about this and so yeah I just want to give you my gratitude for coming on the show and, and for sharing sharing everything it's a pleasure yes thank you so much do you have any any goodbyes any last words any shout outs you want to give thank yous to people back home <laughs> Well, I'll start. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Tessa. It's really nice to meet you. I always wanted to see who is Tessa. Who is Tessa? <laughs> and now I have you right beside me. And also, all you guys, Guadalupe Media, thank you very much for this opportunity that you guys have given us right here in Corzal. And I believe, well, I know that this will go, uh, will go viral. And um, I know that youths out there are many youths out there who would like to join us as well and um, i invite each and each and every one of you guys to come and join us see what what um what a youth group does what are the different activities that we have here yes of course we we do come to praise god and always put god first in whatever activities we do in whatever actions that we take but also we are youths right so therefore we also have fun activities um, we have sports, we have different events, presentations, dances, singing, um, and all of those activities. So don't be afraid and come to any coordinator of your village. And um, you can just write your name in, sign yourself in, and you'll form a part um, with us. And also come closer to God each and every time. And that's what uh, we encourage and that's what we want to spread the word of God um, all over the world. Okay, well, first of all, thank you guys for actually hosting us. Um, finally get to meet you as well. I've seen episodes of Guadalupe Media, which are interesting. Um, I remember when you made the episode with um, Father Shahir, and it was very good. So um, I like the idea that you brought the episode in each district, which is good. Um, we get to encourage other youth to get to um, teach them more about each topic. So I'm grateful for that. Um, also, we are calling out the same as how Ms. Wengli said, um, calling out on all youths. Um, don't be afraid to be part of a youth group. Um, don't think that because you're in a youth group, oh, you're a saint. Of course, we are not saints, we are sinners, but we are here to praise God, you know, like we are here to enjoy as youths, you have the right to enjoy. We will have different, there is time for everything. There is time for enjoyment. There is time for praising God. And we're calling out on all youths. 
So don't be afraid to be part of a youth group. We are here for you. If you're struggling, if you're shy, don't worry. That shyness will eventually go away. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Everybody else? Okay, I want to give thanks for the invitation. It was a pleasure being here and express what I feel and think about the confession. And I encourage all the youth seeing this video and this episode that don't be afraid. If you are closer to God, you will feel life more beautiful. And I encourage them to take the courage and co come closer to the Word of God and be stronger in your feet. Well, I, I would like to give you thanks for having us here today and for inviting me. I was like, I was, uh, um, when Wengli asked me first, I was like, okay, yes, I can do it, yes. <laughs> and I was like, when she told me and everything, I was, okay, I'm going to search what is Guadalupe Media, what it does and everything. And I was seeing the Beyond Basic Others episodes and all of that. And I'm so grateful to be here. and. Well, I invite um, the youths who want to join the youth group, especially Pachacan youth group. We, um, well, inviting us um, youths from Pachacan and from uh, Carrizal district. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to say thank you for inviting me, the, the only boy <laughs> in this group. <laughs> yes, the representative was, uh, of the male yes, species. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> it was a nice experience. Thank you all so much once again for, for coming out. And like I said, this is going to be the final episode of this season of Beyond Basic. Well, this part of this season of Beyond Basic. But we will continue to feature other parts of the country. And so if you have a Catholic youth group that you want us to feature in the near future, please reach out, let us know so that we can also feature. We want to feature as many youth groups across, across the country as we can. If you would like to sponsor an episode of the, future, of the future seasons of Beyond Basic, please feel free. We also want to encourage our viewers to share these episodes, to like them, to please follow Guadalupe Media content. We really try to evangelize through media in a world that there's so many messaging, especially for people in my generation, for us young people. There's so many other secular messaging that's telling us all kinds of things and it can get very confusing, but we try to speak truth into that and to evangelize through this platform. So we encourage you to support our mission here at Guadalupe Media. And, you know, if you live in Corazal, like Ms. Wingley said, you can join one of the youth groups they have. There's youth group. How many youth groups do you guys have in Corazal? 14 communities. 14 communities in Corazal. So I'm sure that no matter where you are, there's something for you, something nearby, and to be a part of this beautiful family. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching, for watching Beyond Basic, for watching this season for being a part of this family, and we hope to see you very soon in future Beyond Basic Missions. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and God bless.